Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. My name is Ari, and welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you'll stick around for a quick video. Hey guys, so today I want to talk about a subject that periodically pops up into the news, and, and I think it's really important when we're talking about transgender children. So, if you are the parent of a trans child, or a parent who thinks maybe your child might be transgender, hopefully you'll stick around to listen. If you're just interested in the subject, and you've been, you know, you've heard some things about transition with kids, then also stick around. So, the first thing I want to talk about, there are a lot of misinformation out there about what it means for transgender children, what transition looks like for transgender children. So let's talk about what does and doesn't happen, and we're going to start with what doesn't happen because that's where the most misinformation comes into play. So let's clarify. There are no surgeries for a transgender child. It simply does not happen. No transgender child is having gender confirmation surgery. We are not doing any nips and tucks on the lower deck. Doesn't happen. For a number of reasons. One, if you're talking about a transgender um, female, it wouldn't even be possible there anyway because there has to be enough material to actually create what needs to be there. That is why they don't it's not even a thought process. So, no. If you're worried about, well, what about surgery for trans kids? It doesn't happen. Okay, and what about hormones? Well, again, when we're talking about children, it doesn't happen. Young children are not put on hormones. For a very honest, very intelligent, very common sense reason. Because even children who are cisgender are not hormonal during that time frame. It's simply not even worth the time because no one starts to develop at that point in time. What transition for a transgender child means is nothing more than what is called social transition. And what that means basically is that you know, perhaps you let them wear a different outfit, clothing that might be associated with the, with, you know, the opposite gender, so to speak. Uh, maybe you let a, a transgender girl grow her hair out, or a transgender boy might cut long hair off to have a more male appearance. Maybe they go by a different name um, than what they previously did that fits more gendered within what they identify as. Um, everything that's done during this process is totally reversible. There is no irreversible. Hair grows and hair can be cut. Clothing, just as easily as you can change over from boy clothes to girl clothes, you can change from girl clothes back to boy clothes. There is no permanent change here. It's allowing a child the time to explore and find out who they are. And I know a lot of people want to say, well, you can't be a trans child. You can't know that as a kid. Really? How many of you who are cisgender and might be watching this video, did you know that you were a boy or a girl when you were a little boy or a little girl? Yeah, you did. Children can know their gender identity. Yes, I know we hear, well, well, kids explore. They absolutely do. That's why the process allows them time to explore. Now, what are some things that may actually happen aside from the social transition? Well, after a lot of consultation, usually with, with you know, psychotherapists, with, with medical doctors, there may come a point in time when a child is entering puberty that puberty blockers may be a conversation. It may be something that parent, child, and medical staff have a conversation about. And what is a puberty blocker? Well, it's exactly what it says. It blocks the onset of, of puberty. Speaking specifically with, with a trans girl, 
what it would do was it would stop the onset of male puberty, of what would be considered male puberty. It would stop things like facial hair from beginning to grow. It would stop things like the deepening of the voice. Um, it could slow down some extreme height jumps that tend to happen with someone who is, you know, XX or XY, whichever way you want to look at, you know, it, it, it allows them a pause. It puts a pause on, on puberty, giving that time frame for the family to decide what they want to do. That process, that puberty blocker, is completely and totally reversible. If it's removed, the medication is no longer there, then the person simply begins into puberty. And they'll go into what's considered the natal puberty and begin to develop. If not, if that person is very adamant about their status as a trans person, then the discussion may move on when you're dealing with the onset of what would typically be puberty with the introduction of things like hormones. And that has a more lasting impact. But it's important to note that that's much further along in the discussion. By this point in time, if you're still questioning, is my child really trans? Then you're probably questioning it because you don't want your child to be trans. Not because you don't believe they are, but because you don't want them to be. So, at that point in time, there may be things like hormones, which will develop them based on their gender identity. Um, and, and then, as they become an adult, they will be able to make decisions about whether or not they do want any types of surgery or, or what if so, what surgeries do they want? Um, and, and under most cases, the most common, of course, is gender reassignment surgery, also known as bottom surgery. And in that case, that is typically not even a conversation until 17 to 18 years old. Um, so these are not immediate things. So if you think that your child is trans, look into it research, be affirming, be what a parent is supposed to be and accept your child's time to explore. Sure, go find a medical professional, a psychologist, someone who you can work with on these issues. But make sure that you're going to someone whose focus is on your child's best interest, not someone whose focus is on changing your child. It's about understanding who your child is, because if you're not aware, if you are more oppositional to your child's transition, and you're looking at therapy as a way of fixing your trans child, you need to know that conversion therapy, A, does not work, and B, is very, very damaging and dangerous. The cost in many cases is, you know, a, depression is a common thing, especially when a child isn't accepted for who they are. You are looking at suicide, which has happened a lot with victims of conversion therapy. If you look back to either 2014 or 15, here in my home state of Ohio, we had a trans girl by the name of Leela Alcorn, who was either 15 or 16 years old, her family was not accepting of her identity, forced her into this type of pastoral conversion therapy, and the end result was that she stepped out into traffic to end her own life. She did so successfully, so the only thing that that conversion therapy was successful at doing was it converted a living transgender girl into a corpse. That's what happens. So you need to look seriously at what's in the best interest of your child, not simply what mommy or daddy would prefer. Because, let's face facts, are you everything that your parents wanted you to become? Did you go into the career that they wanted you to, to be? Did you marry the person that they wanted? Did you, do you live the life that they expected 100% for you? No, you don't. We all make our own decisions, and good parents accept those decisions. 
good parents allow us to be ourselves. You need to be the good parent. Your child, no doubt, is going to face obstacles in life if they are transgender. It is a sad fact, but it is a fact. There are many transphobic people out there, both in secular society and especially in religious communities, if that is what you're coming up in. So, they need an ally on their side. They need more than an ally on their side. They need a fighter. They need someone who is going to be the warrior for that child. And the person that they should be able to expect to be the warrior for them is their mother and their father, their mother and their mother, their fathers, whatever the makeup of your family is. Their parents should be there as their warrior. You are not damaging your child by allowing your child to be themselves, but you are most certainly damaging your child by refusing to accept them for who they are. You are going to instill shame, guilt, all of these things that they are going to carry into adulthood. Maybe you'll look successful in that process because maybe they just simply won't tell you about their trans identity anymore. But what you're ultimately going to create is a person who has been psychologically damaged. You are going to damage your relationship with that child if you don't accept the child for who they are. But you need to know the facts. Don't listen to the BS that the radical right is going to throw at you because they're going to try to tell you that trans kids are out here getting gender confirmation surgery or, as they like to put it, getting their genitals mutilated. It simply doesn't happen. Research. Find out. Talk to reputable, common sense professionals. They will tell you it doesn't happen. What does happen is children die every day, trans kids, because they didn't have acceptance from their family. Accept them, love them for who they are, help them throughout their process, do what good parents do. And in turn, what you'll have is the type of bond with your child that you could not imagine. There is no bond quite like what you will have when your child knows that even when people in their own community may not have supported them, you as their parent were their fighter, were their warrior. You were the one who was saying, no one is going to successfully come against my child. And that is going to create a lifelong bond because that child is going to know that if there is one person I can trust, it's my parent. Make the right decision. Inform yourself. And at the end, understand that having a trans child is not a failure. Not accepting your trans child, that is a failure on your part. And it's a failure that's going to have lasting, lasting impact. So, closing out the video, I'm going to end with my quote from Kesha. Don't let the bastards get you down. If you are the parent of a, tr of a trans child, let me assure you, there is a lot of people that are going to attack you if you support your child. Do not let them get you down. You do what's right for your child. You do what is in the best interest of that child. If you're coming from a re religious background, that child has been entrusted into you by a creator based on your religious views. So, make sure that, that, that you've been trusted to care for, that you live up to that obligation to care for that child. You won't regret it in the long term. Acceptance never results in regret, but bigotry, prejudice, regret is just par for the course. Anyway, I hope that you'll come back for more videos in the future. Please feel free to leave your comments, like, and subscribe. Let me know what videos you would like to see in the future. I'm always interested in hearing your input. Um, I do want to get more active in the channel, more involved, uh, creating more content. So I need your input. I've been doing this for, you know, three and a half, four years, whatever the time frame is now. It gets hard to continually come up with new subject matter that we need to discuss. Sometimes it's out there. I'm just not thinking about it. I need what's on your mind, so leave it in the comments, message me, whatever you need to do. Let me know what you'd like to hear about. And anyway, guys, lots of love, and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.